Hi guys, I'm Brent Rose, tech writer and anthropomorphic crash test dummy. So you know how the Segway never really quite caught on? Well, there's a whole new breed of rideables here. They're being championed by the best and brightest among us. Visionaries like Justin Bieber, Wiz Khalifa, and J.R. Smith are really on board with these boards. But do these things really have a future? Are they something you could realistically ride to work? Or are they dangerous death machines that'll fall apart if you sneeze on them? We're gonna put them to the test today, so let's find out. So I've never tried any of these things. To test how easy they are to learn, I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes on each of them. This is the Funky Duck. It costs 1,500 bucks. It has a claimed range of 10 miles, top speed of 12 miles an hour. This is the one most of the celebrities have been messing around on for the last few months. Oh, turning is so hard. Oh. You really have to lean into it. Whoa, man. What's that beat? Maybe it's the speed limiter. Whoa. I have trouble imagining myself riding this to work. I already feel relatively competent. So this next one is the Hover Tracks. Looks a lot like the Funky Duck, doesn't it? Well, the hover tracks actually came first and they've got the patents to prove it. This one costs 1,500 bucks, has a range of just nine miles and goes only five miles an hour. Oop, doesn't feel that much slower, really. I feel like I have way more control on this one. <laughs> Are you okay? That's just gonna be the first of many today. Yeah, I feel way more in control. This one scares the shit out of me. This is the Z-Board Pro. It costs 900 bucks. It has a range of 13 miles and it can go up to 20 miles an hour. Good God. Now, I've always been a truly terrible skateboarder, so tell my mom I love her. Hey, how you doing? It takes a much more effort to turn this thing, but it feels more familiar to me. No! Stopping is gonna be the challenge. Lean back! Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yoo hoo Shit. So that was definitely a lot more challenging, but it was way more fun too. The biggest weirdo out of this whole field of weirdos has gotta be the Solo Wheel Extreme. This thing costs a whopping 2,300 bucks. It has a maximum range of 15 and a half miles and a top speed of 10 miles an hour. It's basically a self-balancing electric unicycle that you stand up on. So this should go well. Oh God. It comes with this little like training crotch strap. <laughs> oh man, it's definitely on, right? I'm worse with the strap. Oh. What the hell? This strap was betraying me. I want to love you so bad, but I hate you so much right now. The strap is back. Definitely easier with the strap. I can taste it. Can't really taste it. I can smell it though. Fuck yes. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Lost a little skin. It's gonna take a little more time to get the hang of it. Welcome to the time trial. We've set up a 50 yard course. We're gonna see which one of these things can get me through fastest. We've also got a radar gun clocking my speed and I've got all my protective gear on. Even for a tech writer, this is considered very dorky. Shit! <laughs> no, come on. 12.69. 14 miles an hour. Ooh, man. Are you okay? <sighs> yeah, not good. <sighs> oh, God damn. 13 miles an hour. Let's just address this point here real quick. Yeah. Their website says the top speed's about five miles an hour. I was going 13 on that thing. I hit real hard there. Are you okay? Let's see. I'm okay. To be fair, this one isn't really made for outdoor use. Really, really happy I had this on. All right, let's try that one again. Oh, it's so squirrely. Mm. 1365. 11 miles an hour. And it definitely feels shakier at high speeds. <laughs> Woo! Uh. 11.15. 15 miles an hour. Yeah, that one felt fastest for sure. It's hard to shift your foot and you actually get yourself stopping. That was fun. This thing is really growing on me. Well, that was intense. Uh, I'd say overall the solo wheel took this one for me. It just felt the most stable and the most secure at speed, followed closely by the Z board. Both of these other two where you you're, have a wide parallel stance just felt very strange when your direction of travel is perpendicular. Next up, we're gonna look at handling. We've set up a little obstacle course and we're gonna see which one can get me through the quickest and the easiest. Ugh, Jesus, God damn, I hate that thing. 
26.63. Definitely felt like I was in control. I had speed where I wanted it. Go. Thirty fifty six. This is so much harder to control this one at speed. Go. Oh god. Oh god. Thirty three twenty two. Badass on the straightaways. Sharp turns, not so much. Go. Ooh. Seventeen eighty seven. Woo! This was the hardest for me to learn on, and now I feel so much more comfortable on this one than any of the other ones. It's too bad it's so expensive. And for our last challenge, we have the curb test. It's pretty complicated. I'm gonna drive these off a curb. Jesus. Oh! Good job, Funky Duck. Hover tracks. Come on, come on, come on. Oh! Again! Yo! Z board. Oh, God! Oh, Brianna sticks the landing. Uh, Brianna was my old gymnast name. I don't like to talk about that. All four of our boards passed the curb test. I'm shocked, frankly. Nice to end on a high note. So what did we learn here today? While all of these were pretty fun to ride, I wouldn't say any of them were really ready for daily commuting. Between the two rivals, the hover tracks and the funky duck, I have to say I prefer the funky duck. The wider stance really helped a lot. The Z board was definitely fun to ride, but ultimately my overall favorite has gotta be the solo wheel extreme. It was the hardest to learn, but ultimately the most satisfying. It's just a lot of fun to ride. So what do you think? Are these things you could use in your day-to-day -day life, or are these just toys for rich kids? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to Wired if you haven't already. And with all that being said, there's really only one thing left to do.